Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Finally, I have a pile of Vander Specs in front of me. If that gives you any idea on what this video is going to be about. I'm at a little bit of a different angle today. I hope it's okay. I just, I don't know. I was kind of getting sick of the straight down shot of, to my boring white desk with the really harsh ring light on. And I just wanted to try something different. I feel like this is a little more exciting. I don't even have my ring light on, so this is just pure natural light. I thought a shot of my desk might be a little more friendly and inviting than just a cold, harsh, straight down ring light. <laughs> Hopefully it's okay. Um, I also know that this is not something that I need to apologize for, and I hope none of you apologize for it either, but my nails aren't done. My nails have been done consistently for the past couple months, but I have, I took the old gel nail strips that I had on. I took them off and I've been sick like all week. Um, I was taking antibiotics and it made me really nauseous. So I just haven't felt like myself and therefore I haven't put new nails on, but I'm finally starting to feel better because I stopped taking them and I'm starting to feel like myself again. Anyways, um, I did a little uh, reel. I almost said a TikTok. I did a reel comparing my different Vanderspeck planners on Instagram. And then I thought to myself, that would be a really good YouTube video. I have YouTube videos unboxing all of these customs. I also have two touch me ready to ships. Um, but I did a video unboxing all of these and I've done setup videos for each of them as I've been in them. But one thing I've never actually done is compared them. So I thought maybe that would be a cool thing to do. Um, the reels was just a really quick like snapshot of the characteristics of each planner in leather, but here I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. Um, I don't know if it'll be so much comparing as it will be just talking about the characteristics, but I don't know, kind of, I guess so. Um, I actually want to start with the first custom that I got, which is the Janet Leather Undyed. So this is their Janet Leather. Let me get my velvet sand out of the way. They do actually have um, quite a few colors in this Janet leather. So this is obviously the undyed. It's got a really natural, natural leather color to it. I love it. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Some people hate undyed, but I love it. Um, but the Janet leather itself, I think it comes in Janet leather brown, Janet leather dark brown, there's black, and I would assume they all feel the same, just obviously different colors. I'm in love with this. This leather is what I would describe as scrumptious. Like I want to eat it. Like it's squishy. It is so squishy and bendable. And when it's filled up with stuff, it is so chunky and satisfying in the hand. Like it just feels really squishy. Out of all, I get asked all the time my favorite custom out of the ones that I have, Stardust, Velvet Sand, Undyed. Honestly, if we're talking purely leather, I think Undyed is my favorite leather. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the soft feel of the other two, but like this is the only one that's like leather leather. Like this is like legitimate leather. It is so soft, it is so squishy, like I just love it. Even if you don't get the Undyed and you get just like another Janet leather, you cannot go wrong with Janet leather. However, because of the open structure, it is prone to, um, you know, stains, water spots. It does pick up stuff like that a lot easier than anything else. So I am somebody who doesn't want stains on my planner. There are people who don't mind them and they think it gives a character and you know, everyone's different. So everyone's going to feel differently. I don't like that. I'm more of like a keep all my stuff pristine and perfect. It's actually funny though. So I feel my ring planners, I like to keep pristine and perfect. But my um, Traveler's Company Traveler's Notebooks, those leather ones, I want those to be scratched to high hell. I will take my freaking fingernail. I'm trying to grab one. These leather Traveler's Notebooks, I want this to be scratched up. This is the only time when I want like a character marks all over it type of thing. But when it comes to my ring planners, I do really like them to be pristine. So there's two ways that I've kept it like this. I've used each of my planners for about two months and I'd say they're still looking pretty damn new. Um, two things, one, I spray it with Apple Guard rain and stain water repellent. I think that helps a lot. Apparently it just gives it that coating. If you got a water droplet on it, apparently what would happen is, um, I guess like it wouldn't penetrate into the leather and it would kind of just beat up on the surface because of that protective layer. But not only that, but my pocket ring planners, 
they stay on my desk all day, every day. They just stay open on my desk to the current week. And therefore I feel okay about buying sensitive leathers because I know that my planner won't leave my desk. If you are somebody, and I also work from home. So literally it's just open to my weekly and it's just there for reference for me to write in. You know, at the end of the night, I'll flip to my trackers or flip to my bills when I pay a bill. But yeah, my planners don't really leave my desk and therefore I know that I'm somebody who can handle these sensitive leathers. If you don't like your leather to be marked up, but you're looking for a planner that you can throw in your bag and take with you everywhere, then this leather or velvet sand, for example, might not be the best option for you. So yeah, that's just my two cents on that. Um, it is a pretty thick leather. It is very, it, it's pretty thick. It's not as, well, actually I would say velvet sand is the same thickness, but velvet sand is stiff. That's the difference. This is a thick leather, but it's not stiff. It's very bendable. Um, you can see that it does not lay flat. It is a little bit better when there's stuff in it, but no matter what, like I don't think this will ever lay completely flat. It's just that kind of leather. When you've got like inserts in, it's a little bit better, but it will still pop up like the slightest bit. So that really annoyed me at first. Like I could not handle that. I was used to mo terms, which are really thin, really cheap and lay completely flat. Um, so it was kind of a hard adjustment for me, but once I started using it, I really didn't notice that part at all. Like I just got used to it. I did not notice at all that it didn't lay flat. So yeah. Oh, also this smells really good. But those are all my thoughts about undyed. Um, I do want to say too, all my customs, if you follow me, you probably know this, all my customs are the same exact measurements. The only difference is like this in Velvet Sand has square corners and Stardust has round corners, but the exact, the measurements are the same. Like I got a back pocket on each of them, a chunky strap. I basically get the width of the 20 millimeter junior, but with 25 millimeter rings. And because of that, I do no pen loop. I like my dividers to come right to the edge. I don't like having a pen loop in the way. I don't like how they sit further back. Like I don't like if my inserts end right here. So these configurations have been perfect for me. I'll talk a little bit more about that with my velvet sand because there's stuff in there so I can show you. And then I'll also probably address it again when I'm talking about the touch me's because I love the touch me leather, but I honestly want to order those in a custom because I don't like the measurements. So yeah, that is undyed. I'm going to move on to the Stardust now. The Stardust was such an interesting one. I did not expect it to, I don't know, feel like it felt, sit like it did. So the first thing, this uh, is called a Velvet Matte Croco, and it definitely doesn't feel like your, I guess, kind of like waxy Croco, which is what most people are used to. That's normally, I feel like, what Croco leather is like. This one is literally exactly what the name says. It's Velvet Matte. It's super soft. However, I do not find this leather to be susceptible to watermarks and stains. It will pick up fuzz, though, just like that, that little black mark. Was just a little piece of fuzz it'll pick up fuzz because it's so soft like fuzz kind of attracts to it but luckily you can you can brush it off easily um i do not i did not spray this planner i get that question a lot i did not spray this stardust i didn't feel like it needed it um people ask a lot about what i think about the wear and tear of stardust to me this isn't the type of leather this isn't the type of open structure leather that's going to pick up uh, water spots and stains like that, if that makes sense. I feel like water spots is kind of the big one. Um, a leather like undyed and velvet sand is really susceptible to that type of thing. This doesn't have that same open structure. So I didn't feel that the rain and stain repellent was necessary for this. The only thing I could see happening to this is because it, it's almost like so soft and delicate that like, for example, if you threw this in your bag every day for a year, I could see maybe the corners kind of balding over time because it's almost like a suede. Similar to the velvet sand, it's almost like a new buck or like a suede. So I could see like, you know, maybe the corners kind of rubbing and balding a little bit, getting a little shiny. Um, but I just don't see this staining like like an undyed. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's just, that's just how I feel. And therefore this is the only custom of mine that I did not spray with that repellent. And I honestly didn't baby this one as much either. I did not baby it as much as I babied my undyed and my velvet sand. It's just a different leather type. I've seen people get like pen marks and stuff on this. Obviously, no matter what the leather is, whether it's open structure or not, if, if a pen, you know, marks on there, it's likely going to stain like except for maybe Moterm. I feel like you could probably rub out a pen mark on a Moterm. 
but no matter what a pen mark's gonna stain but like I don't see this collecting water spots like I said maybe I'm wrong I didn't test it out so I don't know but that's just my opinion the other thing about this stardust is it is so much thinner than I expected like this is thin as heck this leather is so thin I did not expect that um but I ended up loving it because this planner lays completely flat it really does especially when there's inserts in it like this thing lays flat as a board and that was really awesome to me because like I said if I had a choice I'd prefer my planners to lay flat I've kind of gotten used to the undyed and the velvet sand they don't bother me so much anymore but this was a nice treat when I was when I was living in the stardust I really really loved how it laid flat um so yeah I guess that's pretty much it about the stardust I feel like I talked about the undyed for longer. Sorry, Stardust. I do love you though. Oh, I guess I should mention the color, which is probably good. I don't have a ring light on. This is like natural light. It's kind of like a really, it's like a gray-ish, but I almost feel like it can look a little purpley or pinky sometimes, but it's kind of like a cool toned gray. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about Velvet Sand, which is the one that I am currently using and currently moved into. As you can see, all my stuff's in there. This velvet sand, oh bitch, she's like a, she's like a pristine princess. I mean, she's literally such a freaking princess. She's like, I don't even know how to explain it, but I have had some issues with her, some things that have bothered me, but all in all, this leather is just so stunning. It feels so amazing that like you can't help but love her. So first of all, velvet sand is very nude pink. I feel like on camera, it comes off more brown nude, but in person, she has a serious pink undertone like it's still a nude but it's a heavy pink undertone so that's definitely something I always mention I can never seem to pick up the true color on camera no matter what I do the second thing is I think everyone knows velvet sand is known for its like nubuck leather softness I seriously before I got this I thought everyone just hyped up velvet sand I'm like everyone hypes it up it can't be that serious okay I just got a phone call but I'm back um, anyways, where did I leave off? I think I was saying that when I first like got Velvet Sander, first ordered it, I was like, it's hyped up. It's got to be overhyped. Like, what's the big deal? Like, it's freaking leather. You know, how amazing can leather be? I've already felt undyed, so how much better can it be? But no joke, this is worth all the hype that it gets. Just the feeling and the softness of it is out of this world. I could never explain to you how amazing and soft this feels. I don't like to pet it too much because I'm scared that the more I pet it, the more it's at risk of getting a mark on it. Or, you know, I tend to have really clammy hands sometimes, so I'm scared. I honestly feel like some of these dark marks you see, I mean, you can get dark marks just from brushing, almost like brushing the leather one way or the other, but I feel like some of these, no joke, are just from me like holding it with like clammy hands. It just kind of gives like almost like a marbly finish. Now this, I feel like this is definitely the most sensitive leather that Vanderspeck has to offer. Even though it's also a Janet leather, just like Janet leather undyed, I feel like undyed, jail black, jail brown, it's not nearly as sensitive as this one. Like this one will seriously pick up marks and water spots and stains so obviously that's a downside. If you don't mind that, then you don't mind that. But if you want to keep your planner pristine, then, you know, you really have to, you have to baby it. Unless, like I said, unless you just don't baby it and you don't care. Um, there's a, someone on Instagram who I follow. Her handle is blissfully planned. She ha used a velvet sand for months straight and she didn't baby it at all. She took it everywhere with her. She just used it and loved it. So if you wanna see what a velvet sand looks like that's really just been used, deeply used, definitely check out her profile because to me that was super interesting. We were even chatting. I was like, it's really interesting to see what her velvet sand looks like after using it for many months and what mine looks like. To me, mine pretty much still looks brand new. I mean, this is kind of how it looked when I got it. Um, same with my undyed and that's just because again, this does not leave my desk. It is always sitting open on my desk and that's just that's just that. But she definitely took hers all around with her and hers even got like shiny in some places. Like I think the like nubuck like leather or nubuck like 
I guess like softness or fur, I don't know what to call it, kind of like would rub off in some places and it became shiny. Like it almost became like a completely different planner over time of using it like that. Um, but yeah, the, so other than like, you know, it being super sensitive, a huge downside of the velvet sand is it is super thick or stiff. So it's just as thick as the, as the Janet leather, like undyed or whatever, but it's stiffer. And I mentioned that earlier. So same thickness, but it's not bendable. I mean, I know I have cards in here, but trust me, like this leather is so stiff. Like I wish I could explain to you just like on its own. It's literally so freaking stiff. Um, and so because of that, it has a really hard time laying flat. You can see when it's open to the front, like it's like a freaking seesaw. When I'm open to the middle, that's kind of how it is. And this is, you know, at first it bothered me. I do think it's gotten better over time. Like when I first got it, it was like this. And I was like, oh hell no, I can't do that. Over time it's gotten better. It's flattened out a little bit. I put like heavy stuff on either side to kind of help it along. And this is how it sits now. And it doesn't really bother me anymore. I don't really notice it at all anymore. I think it's just something you just get used to, you know, like at first it's such a big pain in the ass, but then over time you just kind of get used to it. So that's where I'm at now. I'm used to it. Um, but yeah, uh, I will say too, like I got a back pocket because I've gotten a back pocket on all my customs. I don't know why I just like having a back pocket there. I, I, the irony is that I'm always worried that if I don't do a back pocket, like the planner's going to be too thin or it's going to feel too thin. Like I like to have that extra reinforcement. And with the Stardust, such a thin leather, I'm so glad I got a back pocket. But honestly, if I could do it over, I would not get a back pocket on my velvet sand. Now, I will say, obviously, Vanderspeck, they know what they're doing. If you ordered a Stardust without a back pocket, like it wouldn't just be like this thin. What they do is they cut the leather, like they split the leather to whatever thickness, like I guess works for what you ordered. So if you order a back pocket, they'll split the pieces of leather a lot thinner. If you don't order a back pocket and you just have that one piece of leather, they'll split it thicker. So they know obviously how to make a planner. Like I don't think that they'll, they'll ever make one that's like, way too thin or like a freaking piece of paper flimsy but I do wish that I left off the back pocket on this velvet sand because it just made it way worse but like I said at this point I'm kind of used to it and I know I mentioned this earlier but yes I did spray my velvet sand with that rain and stain repellent and I will do it again in a couple months they say you're supposed to respray that like every couple months so my velvet sand and my undyed are the two that I sprayed with that so that is the velvet sand the very last Vanderspeck that I want to talk about, aka the last one that I own, everything I'm talking about is the only things that I own, um, are the Touch Me leathers. So this is a part of their Touch Me. So the leather is Touch Me. I, people, I think, like get confused. Like they'll call, I don't know, I think they're, I think even Vanderspeck one time was like, oh, we're adding other le other leathers to our Touch Me collection. And that really confused me because I was always under the impression that this specific leather is Touch Me leather. These Touch Me's are in the Ready to Ship collection. So I feel like it, to me, like I would have thought, I think that they're adding more leathers to their Ready to Ship collection. I could be wrong on that, but I don't know if that even made sense, but I'm fairly certain that the name of this leather is Touch Me. This pebbly, durable leather is called Touch Me leather. And I bought mine a part of the Ready to Ship collection. So you can buy Touch Me leather in customs. And not only that, but they actually have more Touch Me color options if you get a custom. But they also have them ready to ship. And for me, I wanted the Ready to Ship ones because I was like, you know, I can't justify paying double the price. So this pocket 25 millimeter Ready to Ship was probably like $120 or so. And my customs, the way that I ordered them, are 300. So each of my customs was $300, and pretty much exactly, because of, you know, the more add-ons you get, the more it's gonna cost money. The bigger size, the more, you know, it costs money. Pocket is a small size, so it doesn't start off too, too bad, but adding a chunky clasp is like $20. Adding square corners is another $50. Adding a back pocket is another $50. So it adds up pretty damn quickly. So each of my customs was, 
pretty much $300 exactly. And these pocket uh, ready to ship ones were like 120 a piece. That's not including shipping. So it was probably like 140 when all was said and done with shipping costs. And I was like, oh, why on earth would I pay double the amount when I can get the same leather in a ready to ship? And that might be okay for most people, but I gotta say, the measurements in here drive me nuts. Like I'm gonna use them, I haven't used these yet. I do plan on moving into my palm after my velvet sand, but I know that I'm gonna struggle because of the measurements. So these ready to ship ones are so freaking wide. Regardless, they changed it recently. No matter if you get 20 millimeter rings or 25 millimeter rings, and I'm strictly talking pocket, the width is gonna be the same. And apparently they did that, so that way you could use these for regular Pocket or Pocket Plus. I think Pocket Plus would fit perfectly in here. I think it would be great. But I don't use Pocket Plus. I never have. I've only used regular Pocket. And the issue that I have is, and I think I've actually showed this in a previous, like, I think probably in my undyed unboxing I showed this. Um, but, like, Pocket inserts just look so tiny in here. Like, they look, they come like this. So there's, like, all this extra space. And then when the planner's shut, the dividers do come right to the pen loop. So like, okay, I guess I guess that's kind of how it has to be to fit a pen in there. But like when it's open, the whoops, when it's open, the pocket inserts just look so damn tiny in here. Like they sit so far back and they're so small. So I just don't like the fit. And to me, this planner is just it's just wide. It's just a little too wide for me. It's not the look that I like. This is the look that I like. I don't know if you can tell the difference. This is a lot, lot uh, like not as wide. This one's a lot wider. I also like the look of a chunky clasp over a thin clasp. I prefer the look of square corners. So I've said this a couple times, but I think one day, not anytime soon because we're trying to buy a house and I also have a tattoo appointment scheduled. So I do not have the money to buy another custom. But one day I'm gonna get the Parm leather because I love this pink. Like I love this pink Parm. One day I'm gonna get the Parm leather in a custom that's made exactly like my other customs. Like, can you imagine Parm and like these measurements? Ugh, it would be so pretty, so satisfying. But anyways, here you can see kind of where everything comes to and how it sits. Like, to me, this is just perfect. These are my perfect measurements. I like how slim it looks. I just, I love the overall look of my customs. It's just my perfect look. And these being so wide and having the tiny clasp, it's just not my fave, that's all. Like I said, I have them, so I'm still gonna use them. I'm gonna move into it and, you know, just see how it is, but it's just not ideal for me, that's all. And the day that I do order a custom in Parm, I will probably sell this Touch Me Parm. But yeah, that's just a little tidbit about the ready to ships, but that's all personal. A ton of people out there probably have no issues with these measurements and would much prefer to save the money but that's just me and that's only because I've found my perfect custom formula that like I love so it's going to be really hard to go from my perfect custom to this which I just don't like the measurements but anyways that aside let's just talk about the this leather real quick since that was kind of the purpose of the video was the leather and then we will go ahead and move on um, and by the way, or I guess not move on, but be done with the video. So this is the Parm. This is the Pousser, Pousser. I have no idea how to say it, but it's kind of like their like nudie brown. It does have a little bit of a yellow undertone, which I don't particularly love. There it is compared to Velvet Sand, or sorry, Undyed, pretty different. And I'll compare it to Velvet Sand too pretty damn different. Like this almost looks gray next to the velvet sand. The velvet sand's like a warm nude pink and this is like a, I don't know, it's like a cooler tone nude. I don't hate the color, but it's definitely not my favorite. Um, yeah, I still, like I still, that's not a bad, like I don't like it. I do like it. I do love it. I just like the color. I guess I like the velvet sand nude color better. But anyways, the touch me leather is, is, by far 100% their most durable leather. Honestly, if you are looking for a planner that you can just throw anywhere and do anything with, Touch Me Leather is a really good option because I don't know if you can tell, but like, you probably can't tell. It's super durable. Like, 
that's just kind of the material of it. I don't know if you can hear, but I highly doubt this would pick up stains. I This definitely won't pick up water spots. The only type of stain it would probably pick up is again, if you took a pen and you just straight up drew on it, like obviously, but I think any type of, it may even wipe off though. I think most stains that would potentially get on here, you could probably just wipe down with a cloth and it would be totally fine just looking like brand new. So this leather is exceptionally durable and for that, I love it. I would love to bring my planner downstairs on the couch with me, but I don't because I've been in sensitive leather planners for so long. When I move into this parm, I'm gonna take advantage of that. I'm gonna get cozy on the couch with my planner in my lap. The reason I don't do that now is because we have three dogs and I just don't trust the dogs around my sensitive leather. So that's a huge plus for these touch me lines is you don't have to worry about the leather. It's super durable. And they're also pretty thin and floppy, if you can tell. Like, these are pretty damn thin and very, very, very floppy. Um, you could get stiffener if you were ordering a custom and you really wanted it more structured. But because they're so, like, floppy, they lay completely flat. I don't know if you can tell, but yeah, they lay completely flat. Here's this one. You can probably tell, like, how, <laughs> how floppy it is. Um, but anyways, yeah, I guess that's really all I have to say. I hope this video was potentially helpful for somebody who's maybe trying to decide what leather they want. Obviously, I don't own every leather, um, but I think it's a good variety. We've got a velvet matte croc, a Janet leather, some touch me leathers, and then obviously the velvet sand. So yeah, that's it for me today. Uh, I'm sorry that it's been so long since I filmed for YouTube. I have more video ideas, so hopefully more will be coming soon, but definitely let me know if there's anything specific you want me to film, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!